Hello, hello. What's going on, lab partners? All right, so checked Facebook. Looks like we are live. We are ready to go here. Hope everybody is having a great week so far, having a great start to their Wednesday as well. I can't believe it's already almost July. Fourth of July is next Tuesday, right? So another month has flown by. I just can't believe it. Time is flying right now. Uh, let's see what I want to do here. Share my screen in a second. Uh, but essentially what I want to do today is share how to harness the power of chat GPT to shed some unwanted weight, build some muscle, and ultimately just get a good starting point as far as a custom meal plan and then a custom workout plan as well. So maybe you're in a spot where you can't afford it right now or you just don't even know where to begin. I'm going to go through this process step by step and show you exactly how to get started. So with that we can just dive into it here. So let me go ahead and share my screen. I'm just going to share the desktop because that'll probably be easier and I'll be flipping through a couple of windows here. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is go to chat GPT. So I've created this document that's going to walk us through the entire process today. Something that I will do after this training is I will save the link to this or I'll copy and paste that and I'll put it right under this training. So that way you can go ahead and click the link and it'll take you to this Google Doc. And then from there, you know, you can see there's like the whole step by step process, which hopefully this doesn't seem overwhelming right now. But again, we're going to walk through it before I get started here. If you are here live, comment hashtag live down below. Or if you're catching the replay, comment hashtag replay down below as well. And let me know what the biggest takeaway from this training was. And if you guys got some value out of this, as always, I'm open to topics and suggestions from you guys. So if there's something that you want me to do a deep dive on, or there's maybe a problem that you're trying to solve and you're not sure how to solve it on your own, please comment down below. Let me know because I always write down ideas for these Facebook live trainings. Uh, something that I'm thinking about doing next week is sort of a live Q&A session. So what I'll do is either on Sunday or Monday, I will post in the group and I'll ask you guys for fitness and nutrition questions. Post as many questions as you want. And then that Wednesday, I'll do the live training and I'll go through and answer those questions. If I do answer your question, I'll go ahead and tag you so that way you know your question was answered. And then something else that I might also do in addition to that is going to like Reddit forums or maybe Quora, things like that and see what people are asking in terms of weight loss and fitness. And I can go in and sort of dissect the advice and kind of see where people are being led astray and then what they should be doing instead. So hopefully that will provide some value for you guys as well. But today's training is gonna be jam packed with value. Probably one of my favorite ones that I've done yet. So let's get into it. So first things first, chat GPT, right? Go to chat.openai.com. If you don't have an account already, you'll have to sign in or create one and then sign in. I just use my Google account or one of my Gmail accounts, and then it'll save all of your data in this account, whatever prompts you ask it, whatever you use ChatGPT for, uh, it's actually really nicely stored in a library. So one thing that you'll wanna do, probably just copy this down here actually. First things first, you're gonna to wanna to get some information that you want on hand. So when we go to ask ChatGPT, some of these questions to get started, it's just good to know some of these things. So like, obviously a lot of these don't require a ton of preparation. You should know your age, gender, height. You might have to convert that to inches. Just plug it into Google if you need to. Um, your current weight and goal weight. So if you don't know what your goal weight is currently, then take some time to figure out where it is exactly where you'd like to be because you need a concrete roadmap to get there and you need a concrete goal that you're trying to reach. Right? Um, body fat percentage, that's why I included this link down here. So if you click on this, I'll just walk through that really quickly. Um, you don't necessarily need to include this, but the more data that ChatGPT has, the better and more accurately it can predict your maintenance calories. So you can see there are quite a few options on here. You have to put in your age, weight, gender. Um, my favorite is this Jackson Pollock three caliper method. So in my desk here, you guys will probably chuckle at me, but I got my handy dandy calipers. And then I've also got this body weight, or sorry, like, I don't know what you call it, like a body tape measure kind of thing. So you can get this on Amazon, both of them for like seven bucks. This one's nice because you can come in and there's like a little feature where you just put that around. So let's say you wrap that around your chest and then there's a button that you can hit that kind of tightens it up. So that way it's easy to do the measurements yourself. Anyways, my favorite one is Jackson Pollock three caliper method. So this one is really easy to do. It's on your chest, your abdomen, and then also your upper thigh. Whereas the seven caliper method 
you need a partner because there are some spots on your back that would be really difficult to reach and read on your own. Um, so if you don't have that, maybe you have a tape measure laying around. The Navy tape measure method is a good one as well. You just get the height, neck, um, and then abdomen as well. So really only two measurements. So you plug all your stuff in there, get your body fat percentage. You're now got your starting point. And then what you also need to do is open up the Apple Health app or whatever health app you're using on your phone and see how many steps you're doing per day on average, because that will indicate to ChatGPT how active you are. Right? We also want to include the number of workout sessions per week. So if someone's working out three times per week for 30 minute sessions versus someone who's working out six days a week for 90 minute sessions, that's gonna have a huge impact on your maintenance calories and how many calories you need to consume in order to lose weight. And um, then on top of that, another activity factor is sort of your job, uh, job descriptor. So sedentary would be something like, maybe you work in IT, um, <clears throat> you're basically on the computer all day, you're just typing away, sitting in front of that computer, you're not really moving that much, lightly active, I don't know, maybe that's something like a banker where you're on your feet, but you're not moving around a ton. I don't know. I'm not a banker, so I don't know how active that job is. Uh, moderately active would be something sort of what I was doing before, where maybe I'm in a chemistry lab and half the day is spent at my desk analyzing data. But the other half is like up on my feet. I'm at the hood. I'm doing stuff. I'm moving my hand, things like that. And then physically intensive would be something that's like, you know, you're doing construction, roofing, like yard work, whatever it might be, where you're burning like lots of calories on a daily basis and work is pretty much a workout. So once you have all this information on hand, we are now ready to go into chat GPT and get things started. So I went ahead and created this prompt for you guys. So all you have to do is copy and paste this entire thing. And we're going to walk through it right now, but then you're just going to go through and everything that's highlighted and in parentheses. Oops, got to highlight that one too. So everything that's highlighted and in parentheses, you're just going to go ahead and fill out in chat GPT. So here's what we're going to do. Start a new chat and then go through and fill this out. So I'm just going to fill this out using my information. So I am 28. I am a male. Let's just say I'm looking to lose, say 16 pounds. Um, my height, so I'm 5'9", that's 69 inches. So just make sure that if you accidentally like delete something from the prompt that you retype that back in, so like my height in inches, oops, just kidding, we don't need that. <laughs> um, but yeah, just read through this, make sure it's coherent so that ChatGPT understands what you're saying. Um, my current weight, so I'm sitting around 174 and my body fat percentage. So according to my Bluetooth scale, that's another method that you can use as well that I didn't cover earlier. Um, so let's say about 14%, 174 body fat percentage, roughly 14%. I average, let's say like 6,000 steps per day. And I work out, right now I work out five times per week, 60 minutes per session. And then let's just say I work a lightly active job. So, you know, I'm standing, I'm here at my desk, but I'm not really doing all that much during the day outside of working on my computer. So that's giving ChatGPT all the information that it needs. And then I'm telling it, I'm gonna ask you a series of questions to help me achieve this goal. Are you ready? So I'll hit enter. And then it's basically gonna say like, yes, I'm ready. Go ahead and ask your questions. So then first things first, we're going to come in and go to the questions and prompts section. So then what we're going to do is ask it, can you help me calculate my maintenance calories? So I was playing around with this yesterday and there were some times where it would calculate it for me and give me the actual value. And then there were other times where it would sort of suggest like a percentage or something. So I'm hoping this time it works, but if not, you may just have to play around with it and like try a new chat or something to actually get it to calculate and give you those values. Or you can just do those calculations when it tells you the percentages, but let's see what it does today. Okay, so it's going through and calculating right now. It's plugging in all the data. Okay, so let's see. Once you have your BMR, multiply it by the activity factor. Okay, so let's see. This was one of the examples where it just doesn't, it like gives you the equation. So if, if it doesn't do this, we'll plug it into Google and see what happens. But um, 
since it's giving us, you know, those different activity factors, I'm just going to say that I'm lightly active, uh, 1.375. Okay, yeah. So if it doesn't calculate it for you, just say, can you do the calculation for me and pick your activity level? Okay, so now we've got our BMR. That's our basal metabolic rate. And that's how many calories it takes to sustain your life. It doesn't include exercise or other things like that. It's just how many calories does Tyler need right now to have his heart pumping, to breathe, have his lungs moving, things like that, right? It doesn't account for steps, workouts, movement, anything like that. So that's like what's called your total daily energy expenditure or TDEE. Uh, I don't want to get too much into the weeds here. But anyways, our maintenance calories is going to be 25, 26. Okay. So then what we can do, that's great. We can come back to this and we can say, if I want to lose a certain number of pounds per week, how many calories should I eat per day? And I put in here that it's recommended not to pick a target above 1% of your body weight per week, because studies have shown that as you start to go higher and higher above that 1% mark, you're more prone to lose muscle mass. And part of this process is that we not only want to lose fat, but we also want to build muscle at the same time, because one, that will help us get the tone to look that we're after, but two, the more muscle you have on your body, the higher your maintenance calories, because muscle is a more metabolically active tissue than fat meaning muscle takes more calories to sustain. So if you have more muscle, your maintenance calories will actually increase over time. So if you go way too if you go way too fast in terms of your weight loss, you're basically just shooting yourself in the foot. So anyways, we are going to copy this and get back into ChatGPT. So right now I am I put in 174, but so let's just say I want to lose 1.5 pounds per week. So that'll be just under 1%. 1% would be 1.74 pounds. Um, so this will then go ahead and it'll calculate how many calories I'm going to eat under that maintenance. Okay, boom. So now it's telling me that we need to eat 20, 26 calories per day. So then the next step would be coming in here, copying prompt number three. So I want to eat 0 0.8 grams of protein per pound of body weight. Can you help me calculate all of my macros? So protein, carbs, and fats. So let's plug that in. Hopefully it will actually calculate it this time. Okay, so there we go. We got protein. Came up with carbs, like 253. And then fat intake. Boom. Okay, so there's my macros if I want to lose 1.5 pounds per week right now. Uh, so something else you can do, you can see in here is that it's saying, you know, you're wanting to go 25% of your calories from fats, which I'd say is good. I wouldn't go below like 20% or so because your hormones will start to go into whack. You actually need fats to have proper hormone levels. Um, let's see, there's another thing in here, 45 to 60%, 45 to 65% of total calories for carbs. So if you've tracked calories in the past, or maybe you know that you want more carbs or more fats, you can always tell it in this previous prompt, what percentage you want. So you can say, can you help me calculate all of my macros? I want fats to be 40% and carbs to be the remainder of that. And then it'll calculate those macros for you. But anyways, this is a great starting point. We now have our macros. So then this is where it's going to get pretty cool. So I want it to generate a meal plan because I'm lazy. Just kidding. No, we're not. Identity is important. But anyways, let's say we don't have time right now to make that meal plan. I just want chat GPT to do it. Um, so can you help me generate an example meal plan with these target macros and calories? So we'll tell it to do that. It will give us a meal plan. So you can see it's going through and it's telling us exactly what we need to eat to hit those macros. So when I was going through this, I did notice that it gave pretty good nutrition advice. So if you ever join the physique lab and you become an official client uh, of the physique lab, I do have like a recommended food items list. Uh, I don't tell you exactly what to eat because it's more of structuring meals based on your preferences, but still ChatGPT has pretty good advice here. We got eggs, whole grain toast, peanut butter. I maybe would have suggested something like almond butter, but you know, similar enough, Greek yogurt, apple or piece of fruit, chicken breast, quinoa, broccoli. So you're getting your veggies in. 
uh, protein shake, healthy fats from almonds. So like, this is good advice, right? You also notice in here, I put, you can include whatever details you have about meal frequency or food preferences. So this gave us five meals, I guess three meals and two snacks, which is great. However, let's say I only wanted to have four meals and maybe you were eating those at 9 a.m., 12 p.m., let's say 4 p.m. is sort of like a pre-workout snack and then dinner's at 7 p.m. You can tell ChatGPT in this prompt, you can say, basically put this in and then what you'd wanna say is I wanna have four meals at these times and I want that third meal at 4 p.m. to be this many calories or like, you know, the more specific that you get, the better the output of answers you will get from ChatGPT. And another thing you can do is make substitutions, right? So let's say I see grilled salmon on here. I don't want grilled salmon. So again, more specific, you'll get better answers. So if you know what you want substituted, you can just say, can you substitute that with tilapia instead or uh, ground turkey instead? But I'm just gonna say, can you please substitute that? And it'll just regenerate that meal plan for me. So it looks like it just subbed in grilled chicken breast. <clears throat> so again, if you wanted something different, you can go ahead and change that out. So then what I'm gonna do is ask it to help me generate a grocery list for this meal plan. So I'm saying that I'm going to eat this for the whole week. Personally, I like to meal prep for six days and then I leave Sunday as sort of a free day to kind of still eat healthy, but then anything I'm craving during the week, I can go and make like a macro friendly version of that or just kind of like go and eat out with friends, that kind of thing. But anyways, whatever suits your schedule, if you want to meal prep for three days because you get bored of stuff, cool, put it three days and it'll spit it out. Uh, so let's see if it actually does this because we have like a second prompt here asking about that substitution, but we'll see. Okay. So it gives us everything that we need to buy, but I want specific amounts. So that's something that we probably could have included in the previous prompt and just said, like, you know, I want. Okay, so this is just telling me that I put a bad prompt in here, right? Because essentially what it's doing is giving me a meal plan again, but I want it to actually give me a grocery list. So let's try it again. Okay, so that's what I wanted to do the first time. So I'll go into this document and I'll actually edit the prompt before posting it into the group so that you guys don't have to go through all these extra steps. But this is nice because it just gave us our calories. It told us how much we need to eat per day to maximize fat loss and build muscle based on the prompts we've entered. And then it told us what we should eat. We can make substitutions to what we should eat and then we can get a grocery list. So if you don't know like what to do or how to get started, like this is as simple as possible, right? This is a free nutritionist. And then we'll get into the personal training side of things in a second. But this is amazing. So much value, right? So now all you got to do, copy this. Boom. Here's your grocery list. So something that's going to be even more powerful, which I'll do a part two training on this. But essentially, ChatGPT has introduced things called plugins, which means ChatGPT can communicate with external apps and other browsers. So Instacart is a grocery shopping delivery service. So pretty soon ChatGPT will be paired with Instacart, meaning once I have this grocery list, I'll be able to say, can you please enter this into Instacart? And it will do that. And then literally all you have to do is go to Instacart, click purchase and have your groceries delivered to you. So weight loss has quite literally never been easier. And then once that happens, it's gonna be even easier because you don't even have to do anything. Everything's coming to you, right? Uh, let's see. Yeah. So it looks like it had a comment about that. Uh, yeah. So just sort of substitutions, things like that. Okay, great. So now we need to go into this and get a training plan because nutrition is covered. 
So let's come in here and let's use this prompt. So now that nutrition is covered, can you please help me design a training plan? I would like it to be, let's say 75% lifting and 25% cardio. I can only go to the gym, I'm gonna say four days a week for 60 minutes each session. 60 minutes each session or time. Okay, so of course, whatever your schedule looks like, if you're doing three sessions of 30 minutes or you're doing six sessions of 90 minutes, put that in here. If you know like what particular types of lifts you wanna include, so maybe you wanna really include bench press or like say you really enjoy hit cardio, um, you can put that in there, but I'm just gonna keep it simple for now and see what it spits out. Um, since it's a 75%, 25% split, it should give me one cardio day for the hour and then three days of lifting. Uh, so let's see. And again, when I went through and I was playing around with this and seeing what kind of advice it would give, like this is a great workout plan. So I put in a similar prompt yesterday and just looking at this one again, it's like, you know, the, the advice that it's actually giving is quite good for being some robot. I guess it's not just a robot though. That's AI, right? Okay, so we've got upper body strength training. So hitting chest, back, shoulders, back. Um, so this is good because it's got, this is a vertical rowing motion and then barbell rows is a horizontal rowing motion. It's got a horizontal press and a vertical press. So like it's taking into account the motion types, it's hitting arms. I think all of this is appropriately programmed as far as sets. I personally would change up the rep schemes here a little bit just because doing eight to 10 on everything will be pretty boring. So things like bench press, I might go six to eight. And then some of these arm exercises, I might go 10 to 12, 12 to 15, something like that. Um, lower body strength training looks good here. Again, might go like six to eight on squats, um, maybe a little bit higher reps on calves. Looks like you're doing a little bit of abs as well. Let's see, rest day. Okay, so it's interesting because it's telling me to do an active recovery day. I figured it would give me four actual workout days. So maybe you can change this prompt to say like, I would like four workouts during the week, um, something like that. But again, quality of input determines the quality of output here. But either way, this looks good. So you're doing cardio, um, 20 minutes. So that's sort of giving you the option of what you can do. Let's say, I don't like this plan for whatever reason. Let's say I don't like this active rest. Um, haven't tried this yet, but let's see what happens. And then let's say I want to put more emphasis on arms. Let's see what changes it makes. So hopefully this time it spits out four workouts and then it'll give us more volume or number of sets for arms. Okay. So let's see if it does like, okay, so arm day. Yep, so this looks pretty good. It's giving you a whole arm day. So you're gonna get a lot of volume in there. Uh, honestly, like you can play around with it and have it spit out whatever it is that you want. But guys, like I said, this is, it's making it so simple. Like it's probably not good for my business, right? Because this is what I do for my job. Obviously there's the accountability aspect and actually like walking you through it and sort of giving you guidance along the way and holding you accountable, keeping you motivated, things like that. But again, this is like a great starting point because now we have our calories, we have our macros, we have a grocery list, we have the meal plan, we have a training plan. So you might be thinking to yourself, all right, this is great. I've got all this information now. What do I do with it? So that's where this next steps come in. So first things first, what you'd want to do is learn to track your macros, preferably using an app. If you want to do it by hand, you can, or if you're just sticking to that meal plan 100%, then you already know what your macros and calories are. But if you search like calorie counting app or like macro tracking app on the app store, you'll see my fitness pal comes up. That's a tried and true one. Calorie counter, uh, macro factor, which I believe has like a weight loss coach built into it. 
think my fitness pal might have that as well but apps are starting to come out with that now and then also lose it and then when it comes to workouts i would highly suggest tracking your workouts to make sure that you are progressing instead of just going into the gym and kind of like doing the workout that chat gbt has planned for you you want to make sure that you're adding weight or adding reps right uh, one thing that you can do as far as apps go would be downloading strong so that's my personal favorite these other ones i have no experience with um besides for this last one, which we'll talk about in a second, but I've been using strong for like six to seven years at this point, no complaints, great user interface, but for whatever reason, you want to try something new, heavy rep count. I think this is called like JFit or something. All of those had tons of great reviews on the app store. So pick whatever looks great and whatever fits your vibe and then track in there. And again, just make sure you're progressing. We also have a physique lab app. So it's exclusive to physique lab lab partners. It's not on the app store. You can't download it. Um, that's something that our clients get. Uh, but again, that's a great place because in that app, you can track all these workouts, but I can also go in. I can see what workouts you're doing, the weights you use, the reps you did. If you missed workouts, there's like commenting features, sort of like Facebook, where my clients can comment and say like, hey, Ty, this workout was pretty brutal. Or like, hey, um, I can't do deadlifts anymore because my lower back hurts. Like, can we sub that out? Things like that, where there's just a constant communication stream, as well as a messaging feature and group chat function. So if you're not in there already, I would highly recommend considering joining the team because it's just a great place to be. Um, and then the last step would be if you feel like all this information is kind of overwhelming and you're just like, Tyler, I, like this is great, but I just want someone to hold my hand through this process and really make sure I get to that result. What you can do is book a free 15 minute discovery call with me. So you can click here and what that'll do is it will take you to a link to my calendar. And then that way we can find a time that works for the both of us. So that way we don't have to like chat back and forth and sort of play phone tag and figure out when we're calling each other. But you can go ahead, schedule one of those and I will be upfront with you. This is not a sales call. I know in this industry, there's a lot of people that the, like out in the industry that are really high pressure. If you get on the call, they're going to be like, give me your credit card information right now. This call is not going to be like this. I genuinely just want to know what your goals are and if I can possibly help you get there. And here's the catch. If it sounds like both of us would be a good fit for each other. So I think you'd be a good client for the program. And you think I would be a good coach because I don't want you feeling like you're talking to a wall or like, maybe you just don't like my personality, things like that. Like if we talk for a little bit, it sounds like something I can help you with. And then we're interested in sort of moving forward from there. What we can do is potentially schedule a second call. We can dive deeper into what it is you need, come up with a game plan, and then talk about how the coaching program itself would be able to provide that type of solution for you. So that's going to be it for today's training, guys. Again, I hope you like this one. This is probably one of my favorite of all time. There's no excuses not to hit your goals now. You have the roadmap. You just have to follow it. So, all right, guys, have a great rest of your Wednesday, and I will see you next week.